Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make yourself a hundred dollar little flower sculpture. Now when I say a hundred dollars, that price is completely variable based upon what you feel comfortable charging, but I would have no problem selling this in my shop for around a hundred dollars. Now, that being said, you should price accordingly to your skill level or your particular skill set and however long it took you to take and get this particular job done. That being out of the way and as it is, I hope this will be a very informative video for you. So this little flower sculpture is going to consist of essentially three major components. And this is a very interesting way of doing forged sculpture because it uses some fabrication techniques and also forged elements as well. So the joinery it makes it a little easier necessarily. Uh, you, you don't have to do traditional joinery with tenons and things of that nature. If you want to, that's fine, but those generally add a lot of time to a job and you need to charge a little bit more for it. So with that being said, these are laser cut blanks, flower cut blanks. These are some extras out of a rose pattern that I buy, already pre-laser cut, for my roses that I make. Now, I go ahead and I just save out these little ones. These are the littlest ones or the innermost portion of the rows because I decide I don't take and actually need to use those on a on the rows itself. It doesn't add anything to it. It's just extra heft. So, I got a whole box full of these extras here. You can cut your own petals if you'd like. If you want to be more authentic in that way, hell, you can even forge them out of a big thick plate if you feel like that makes it more authentic for yourself as well. Once again, this is just to kind of give you guys some ideals and cook up some of them creative thoughts and juices. The next portion here, and these are of no particular matter of size, I believe these are, let me look at it here on my tape measure. 50 mil across, pretty much. I don't know what it would be. I don't know what's that, a mil? I don't know, a couple mil thick. I don't know how you guys do it over there, but for all of us American people, that's two inches across by about a 16th of an inch thick. There you go. This here is quarter inch thick, which I believe is six mil by three inches. That's 75 mil by three and a half inches. So whatever half of, <laughs> so whatever 75 mil plus half is. Essentially, what is that? 82, 82 millimeter? I don't know, something of that nature. I'm trying guys, bear with me. I'm learning, slow but sure. And then these are just randomly cut lengths of eighth inch rod. Now the holes here are six mil holes or otherwise quarter inch holes and then as you can see the well three sixteenths rod sorry not eighth inch. As you can see that's got quite a bit of knock around in there. That's okay. We didn't want quarter inch rod on this anyhow because it would have been just too thick looking. We want real thin looking stems on this. So the best thing to make it look more natural is to cut your cut all your stems at uneven lengths lengths this will just give the sculpture more dimension as you go along so that's that so the first step in this process we're going to go ahead and I'm going to texture the base off camera I've done several other videos I'll try to put the links to those videos in the description below where I've textured essentially chamfered the base's edges to create a decorative border. You can watch those videos if you want to do how to do that. So the first step that we will actually work on is go ahead and upsetting the end here into the center portion of the flower. So that'll be the first step. Let's get to it. Okie doke folks. So the first step in this process, as you can see, I've got copper jaws in the vise. These help grip the steel a little bit better and prevent sliding. 
And all we're going to do is we're just going to heat up just this little tiny tip up here. Just the very tip of this material a little bit. And we want to try to get it as hot as we can. And a really short heat right on the tip. We're going to use a little rosebud on the torch here for this. And then we're just going to hammer lightly. And when I say lightly, we're not trying to drive this material and get a big upset. So you want to use a really light hammer for this. And we're just trying to just lightly tap on it to make a really nice round dome stamens portion or whatever you would like to call it of the center part of a flower. There we go. So then once you get it to that point, just go ahead and heat it up again. Now you could do this cold, it takes a little more time and finesse, but hot makes it go a little quicker. And just work all the way around it. We're just trying to get out a really nice rounded over head type approach. What we're looking for is more than quarter inch in diameter. That way when you slip it through the hole it covers the hole in the flower blank completely. So just get it really good and hot. Take your time. The more time you take on this the better off you'll be. So as long as we get up to maybe oh I'd say 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths of an inch you're doing pretty good. Now you're going to start noticing it wanting to bend on you or buckle after a period of time. And all you got to do is just take it and go straighten it at the end. So we'll do that now. Go ahead and just get this straightened out. Sorry I'm off camera. Okay. Wash, rinse, and repeat, guys and gals. That's how we do it. Wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm not going to make you sit through this whole thing. But I'm going to go ahead and do one more so you guys can see how it's done. This is a little Scandinavian style cross team that I like using for lock work. I like using it exclusively for that if I can. But it makes a really nice little painting hammer for rivets, small rivets and things of that nature. So like I said, just take your time. Give it the time that it takes. It's just going to take time. And just work it slowly. Without further ado, let's move. We'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which will be doing the flower portions itself. I think you guys can kind of get the idea of what's going on here. You're essentially just trying to take and make sure everything stays straight and aligned, and it doesn't bend over too bad without straightening. So I'll catch you all up in a minute. Here we are at the swedge block. We're going to go ahead and form these little flower blanks now and we're going to do this cold. Reason for that being is this is a fairly soft material and it's fairly thin. Now this here is what I believe to be, yes, this is an inch and a quarter diameter round depression. So that would be whatever that is, that would be what, 40 mil? Not sure. Don't quote me on that for you guys across the pond, you're gonna laugh at this guy. But anyways, the point of that is, we are going to take and set this directly over that and we are going to use the ball of a ball peen hammer and we are going to strike the face of the ball peen hammer with a soft face hammer. 
like what I've made in a previous video. Again, I'll try to put the link to this in the description box down below and at the end screen with the end cards so you guys can see how I made this. It was a pretty fun little hammer build. But we are going to take and go ahead and sink this. Now, something to take into effect. These already have holes in them. And that's one downside of doing this because as I forge this down into this depression, that hole is going to stretch out a little bit and it's going to make it a little more gapped open so I'll have to put a little more weld around it. That's where if you have the ability to use a much larger rod or maybe even a size bigger and then forge down a tenon, it might even be better to do it that way. But once again, we are trying to take and make a very quick project that is uses some forging and some fabrication techniques. So we will go ahead and aim for the center of this and just give it a big whop. And we want to make sure that's tracking down nice and square as we hammer on it and that we're not getting any sort of odd sideways distortion. We want it all to go nice and even. Right down in here until you hear it hit like it just did. And there we go. That's how we finish out our little flower bulbs here. Now, you may be able to notice right around here, we're gonna have a bit of a line here where it kind of scuffed it up. We're gonna take care of that with you know some scotch briding and some sandpaper and things like that and blend all that back in once we do our weld on here. So don't worry about that too much those little bits of overbite. Now the next step in this process is to hold this down and take a small hammer, once again, a very small forging hammer, hold this down in here and then hit those pedals flush to the swedge block. Just like so. It takes a little bit of hammer control and accuracy but you can get it you can get it all down pretty good just by hammering on it here. So we'll just do this all the way around. It's going to get noisy for a second. There's a guy I'm mowing. Let this go right now. And there we go. Guy drove by, good to go. So there you go. That's how it's done. And essentially, wash, rinse, repeat. It's going to be the same for all five of your little flower blooms there. So the next part, we will go over and start arranging our stems, how we want our stems on our base plate, get the holes drilled, and then get it all weld it up. Oakley doakley neighbors, here we are. The fun part. So now we have all of our blooms made up and now we need to figure out how we're going to attach them to our base. The easiest way to do this is obviously to take and just drill a hole through and plug weld them from underneath. You can reference my plug welding video if you need to know how to take and make a plug weld on a small sculpture, like as what I did with the little knot sculpture. So the biggest thing to figure out is what you're trying to portray. Are you trying to portray a natural scene, a whimsical scene, or what is it exactly that you're trying to do? Now all these could be coming out of one hole in the middle and branching off in several different directions, or they can be individual little holes, like they grew up out of the ground that way. Just each natural little flower by itself. So it can be a cluster or it can be individually. There's no right or wrong here, it's just what type of scene you're trying to portray. So in an example, in a more whimsical scene, we're going to move these out of the way for a second so I can doodle. In a more whimsical scene, you may have a base that looks like this. This is side profile. In a more whimsical scene, stuff's going to just come up and kind of just, you know, go wherever, like deal, and have flowers that come off of it, if that makes sense. The more whimsical feel 
is going to be more flowing and so therefore it's not going to need as much of the natural thing although there's not usually many flowers that grow upside down but hey it's whimsical so if you're trying to portray more of a nature aesthetic you want to do things where it would actually make sense the flowers would point at wherever the sun's coming from right especially in the cluster effect where it would naturally catch rain water or get sunlight to itself one of those sort of things so that's the difference between the two really it's all in what you want to take and portray there again also you could go very abstract with it but i'm not an abstract artist so i can't take you that far so what i'm going to do in this particular case is i'm going to drill one hole in the center i'm going to go ahead and back drill that hole as a countersink and then all of these are going to go into one hole. It's going to be a cluster. And as they come out, I'm going to peel them out, spry them one way to the other way, to the other way, to the other way. And then obviously you will have the flower itself in perfect form. Voila, like that. But you can see the inside. And this is going to get welded to the back side. So. I'll drill this hole, I'll do that off camera, and then back, back, do that. And then I will go ahead and show you a time lapse of me welding these up. Before I do the time lapse, which will be a little short time lapse, these are going to go all the way down and hopefully sit right flush in the bottom, is what I'm looking for. And then on the back side here, you can see there's obviously some space around there for a little filler weld. We want to go ahead and weld around that and create just a very minimal bead, as minimal as possible bead around this cup as we can because we don't want to have to spend a lot of time sanding this. And then before we put all this together, all this is going to be wire wheeled to one color. Same thing here. That's all going to get wire wheeled. This is all going to get wire wheeled. So everything's nice and clean. Everything's up to the same coloring, the same stage as everything else. And that's going to affect the way that the finish, the ultimate finish of our small little sculpture is going to come out. So I'll be right back with you here in just a minute after this is drilled and these are all welded and cleaned up. Stoke everybody, here we are. I've got my base all drilled with my hole that I'm going to be putting all the flower blanks in. I went ahead and did it off as a tangent instead of directly in the center. I figured I could do a little something more artistic that way. I went ahead and got my hole back drilled and a touch mark on it. And now it's time to add our flower blooms themselves. So one thing you may notice when you're actually in putting these in here is that, you know, some of them try to like hang up on each other and they're a little difficult to all fit inside that hole and, and get in there just right. And that's okay. You're just going to have to kind of fidget with it a little bit. The ideal of it is you don't want these all to just be straight line. You want them to kind of be twisted a little bit, things of that nature. It makes it look a little more natural like a plant growing out of the base. Now, what I will probably do is I will hold these while I plug weld them all in and then after that is done and that is ground then I can take and heat them with a torch and I can bend them into the shape or uh, into the shape that I want as far as desired 
after that they will go through a second round of wire wheeling and then for the final patina and finishes and then we'll be done. So I'm going to go ahead and get this plug welded up and then I'll be right back with you after I get it rewire wheeled and we will go over the finish that I'm going to use and choose and we'll be done. And here we are, folks. So you can see I went ahead and wire wheeled any heat marks that came off of that. Those are all plug welded into the base. Ground that clean. That way that's nice and hidden. Now for the final finished work. So I'm going to heat this up with a torch. I'm just going to give you this basic rundown. I'm going to heat these up with the torch just slightly, just so I can bend them around where I would like. I want them to kind of have a flowing effect from this side over and you'll see that in the finished photo and so I'm going to go ahead and do that this video has went on long enough I won't go over the finishing techniques on this part it's going to be similar as what I've done in other videos all I'm going to do is let the heat kind of color these and maybe brass brush them a little bit then essentially just re-highlight the base with the wire wheel and put on a coat of Rust-Oleum clear coat. So that's going to be essentially the basics of this finish here. So I will put a end picture of the finished product and what it looks like. So you guys can get an idea of what it should look like. Take your own artistic license on this design as that is what is preferred is to do it to your own styling and your own taste that will best suit your customers needs. So, without further ado, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative enough. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below of what items maybe that you sell that are similar to this that you guys enjoy making for your customers and have a fairly high dollar amount there as well to, in order to pay the bills. Thank you all so much for watching this video. God bless you all, and like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one.